Good morning, huye more san monani ika malami ngigumpo umahatebe upungani umtimkulu iskoloza esmesha wolf. Welcome to Velocity Community Church. In today's service, we have Mposi Kosana who will be leading us in worship. Straight after that, we have Mr. Fernando who will be sharing the kids message. Then, if you remember from last year, there is a group of guys from Cape Town who came up here to spend time with us. So, their leader, Mr. Bruce, will be sharing the message today. I hope you are ready for that and you are as excited as I am. See you straight after the service. Good morning everybody, my name is Mposi Kosana and guess what, I am back. I missed all of you and I am here to do worship with you guys once again after a very long time. Please join me as we are about to worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. As we are about to worship the Lord, may we worship Him in spirit and in truth. And may your worship be a sweet smelling aroma to God this morning. Amen. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may fail, and there I find you in, in oceans deep, my faith will stand, and I Call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I and you are. Strong in the presence of my Savior. 
Hello, my name is Mr. Fernando or Mr. Fabulous. So, over the last couple of weeks, the adults have been talking about how we can make the community livable again. And today, I want to encourage you, our children, to know that you can be a part of this journey. So, in John 6 verse 1 to 14, Jesus has crossed the Sea of Galilee and he's sitting and he's preaching to the people. But now it is the end of the day and the people are hungry. So the disciples tell Jesus to say, Jesus, send these people away so that they can be able to go and find food for themselves. But Jesus turns to Philip and he says, Philip, what do you have so that we can feed the people? Philip tells Jesus and says, Jesus, even if we worked for months, would not have enough food to feed these people. But there was a little boy there who brought his lunch along and in his lunch he had two fish and five loaves. Let's count them. One, two, three, four and five. So Jesus takes these two fish and the five loaves and then he raises them towards heaven and he prays he says father god bless this food and let us feed your people and then he calls all of the disciples to say take this that the young boy has brought this lunch and i want you to feed the people so they take the fish and then they start feeding the people they take the bread and they start feeding the people one after another they feed the people they feed the people they feed the people and it just keeps on multiplying and multiplying and multiplying and multiplying until each and every person is fed we are told that five thousand people were fed and not just fed but there was even surplus there was even more so they could come more and get and after this Jesus told them, do not waste anything. Take all of the leftovers and take them home and feed your family. Imagine 5,000 people. But this was possible because the little boy has brought his lunch, which was two fish and five loaves. So remember, as we go about rebuilding the community, each and every person is required. The children, the elders, the men, the women, each and every one of us is part of rebuilding the community and making it livable again. So do not let anyone tell you that you are too young and you cannot rebuild. Me and you are required to rebuild the community and make it livable again. So, in your community look at what is it that you have that can help rebuild a community whether it is 
the two fish or your lunch box or whatever you have that you can share or your five loaves that which you have for yourself can you share that so that everyone can benefit thank you so much see you next week bye bye Jesus has a very powerful name. Believe in it. Amen. You are the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation. Now revealed.
Hi everyone and welcome again to this online service. It's great to be able to connect and to share this message with you. This past week or so, the international news has been really heavy. Did you see the images of the massive explosion in Beirut because of a large quantity of stored ammonium nitrate? They were crazy, dramatic images of a massive fireball that erupted into the air. And the result is devastating. The fallout is extensive with death, blackened buildings, and with piles of rubble, the falling of government, and then huge civil action initiatives to clean up the area. And it was hard also not to remember that this past week was also the 75th anniversary of the atomic bomb being dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It also resulted in massive loss of life, destruction, blackened buildings and piles of rubble. Now as I was reflecting on this news, the irony was not lost on me. In recent weeks, we've been looking at the book of Nehemiah. In 586, the Babylonians destroyed Jerusalem, its temple and the wall around the city and everything in it. They reduced it to rubble and blackened, cracked limestone bricks. Now, for 70 years, more or less the same length of time since the first nuclear bomb was dropped in Japan, many people were living in exile in Babylon and the rest were living in the ruins in Jerusalem. Jerusalem looked like Hiroshima or Beirut with just rubble and blackened bricks everywhere. Now this is what Nehemiah saw when he arrived in Jerusalem to rebuild the walls of the city. Rubble and blackened cracked bricks. It was so extensive across Jerusalem that Sanballat, the Persian king, mocked and discouraged Nehemiah and the people that were with him. If we look in Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 2, we read about this when it says, And in the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria, he, Sanballat, said, What are those feeble Jews doing? Will they restore their will? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they bring the stones back to life from those heaps of rubble burned as they are? And yet, in this verse lies one of the most important prophetic messages for our time. God uses burnt stones to build his kingdom on earth. Zerubbabel, Ezra, and Nehemiah did bring the burnt stones back to life. The temple and the wall around the city were constructed using burnt stone stones that were burned during the destruction of the former temple and city. These stones had been through the previous failure and now looked useless for building anything and much less the glorious temple of the Lord or the walls around a city. And yet, that is exactly what took place. God used burnt stones then and he is using burnt stones again today. So what does this single verse say to us today? Well, firstly, the main point is the main point. God uses burnt stones to build his kingdom. Have a look again at that verse 2. Can they bring the stones back to life from the heaps of the rubble burned as they are? And this prophetic message of burnt stones being used by God runs all the way through Scripture. Moses burnt after 40 years in the desert. Joseph, after a soul-destroying time in prison. David, after fleeing from Saul to preserve his life and then gathering a bunch of misfits in a cave. We see similar stories in Job, Jonah, Joseph and Mary, Peter, Paul and many others. And then Jesus himself, falsely charged, crucified and left for dead. God uses burnt stones to build his kingdom. So here's the question. Are you a burnt stone? Have you been through or are you going through something that once seemed glorious and pregnant with potential, but now it looks like a terrible disappointment? If so, then you are a prime candidate for what the Lord is doing today and in the days ahead. It seems to me that God is speaking to burnt stones in this season. You think you are rubble, discarded, no use? The world is moving on and now belongs to people other than you? Now you need to hear this carefully. 
the area where you are most burnt is likely to be the exact area that God will use you to build his kingdom on earth. Your rubble becomes the builder's stone. But you do face a terrible danger. And that danger is that you believe that burnt stones no longer have any use. Nothing could be further from the truth. God uses burnt stones to build his kingdom. Listen to this carefully. God works from our brokenness towards others' brokenness. You will always find your point of being used in building God's kingdom on earth at the intersection of your brokenness with the brokenness of the world around you. So what do you do? Firstly, read this verse very carefully, many, many times, until you are convinced that God uses burnt stones and wants to use you. Secondly, move towards brokenness, not away from it. And thirdly, cement your burnt stone with another's and together build a kingdom wall. In this season, you may be on the verge of destiny and not devastation. The second point that we take from this uh, verse is that focus is the new superpower. The provocation of Sanballat had a very interesting twist in it. From mocking, he becomes aware that Nehemiah is actually getting on with the task. And so just a couple of chapters later, in chapter 6, verse 2 and 3, Sanballat and Geshem sent Nehemiah this message. Come, let us meet together in one of the villages on the plain of Ono. But he realized they were scheming to harm me. So I sent messages them, to them with this reply. I am carrying on a great project and I cannot go down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and go down to you? Now, if this message about burnt stones being used in this season catches your attention, you are going to have to develop focus. Focus is the new superpower. Ezra and Nehemiah prevailed because they remained focused. They refused to let the criticism, the mind games, or the opposition stop them. They committed to building God's kingdom on earth and nothing else. They did not answer their accusers or give in to the fake news on social media. They worked with focus and with the swords on, ready to do battle if attacked. Now when it comes to building God's kingdom on earth, it seems to me that laser-like focus without distraction is a modern day challenge. I read this recently. Focus is a new superpower. As technology continues to develop and expand into every area of our life, it's harder and harder to avoid distraction, said this article. One study shows the average person touches their smartphone 2,617 times a day. And that's the average user. Heavy users touch their phones 5,427 times a day. Now that's not an encouraging trend. And that's just your phone. It doesn't include myriads of other interruptions from knocks on your office door to impromptu meetings to the million other things that distract you. But here's what is true. A distracted person is an ineffective person. What this means is because so many people can't stay focused, the ability to focus is now a superpower. If you really want to grow your leadership and skill set in the future, focus on your ability to focus and start with your cell phone. The result of constant distraction is stress, scattered thinking, and shallow decision-making, all of which are exactly the opposite of what you require to lead well. Now, while this article addresses people in the business sector, it applies, perhaps more so, to those seeking to build God's kingdom on earth. God uses burnt stones to build His kingdom, and He wants to use you, but your focus is a critical condition for God being able to use you. Here's the third point we can take from this passage. Where are the Nehemiahs? You know, burnt stones don't look good on the outside. They've been through the fire. They have been tested and they have risen again. And it takes this kind of stone to be used in the coming season of restoration. Now let's just step back and take a big picture view. 
Because it seems to me as if COVID-19 has been very destructive in so many ways, from economic health to relational and even mental health. And yet God's kingdom is always advancing. The ashes of our world are crying out for a Nehemiah to rise up who will gather the burnt stones and put them into position to rebuild the walls even if you are discouraged or criticized. Now what does this mean? You know what? A city is made up of so many groups or tribes, as Seth Godin calls them. It is made up of different sectors, like the business, health, education sector. Now, is God speaking to you right now about being a Nehemiah? Will you look for the burnt stones around you and call them together to make a difference in your sector? So you know what? Some are right before you. They're smoldering, and they're ready to burst into flame again. They just need someone to blow on them. Nehemiah came. He cast a vision. He gathered those willing, and they built a wall from burnt stones. It started with anguish in his heart. So what is the anguish in your heart? I know this is a big ask, but who are the Nehemiahs willing to cast a vision in their workplace and build God's kingdom with the burnt stones right there? Now, I can't tell you what to do, but I can tell you that God is looking for a Nehemiah who is focused and determined and willing to speak life to burnt stones. If you are a Nehemiah, you may be feeling a stirring in your heart right now. Follow that stirring because it's God. And lastly, Jesus. We can see Jesus right through this story as well. You see, across the plains of Jerusalem were strewn burnt stones, a monument to the failure of idolatry and a weapon for the opposing nations to use against the name of the Lord. And yet, from these burnt stones arose a new temple. Can you see Jesus in this story? His own life was burnt out prematurely on a cross due to the idolatry of religion. And then God comes and he takes his son, a rejected stone, and resurrects him as the foundation of a new temple which lives within us. Jesus is now the capstone or cornerstone, the high point, the crowning achievement. This was prophesied in Psalms 118 verse 22. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. It's repeated in Acts 4.11, but this time directly references Jesus. He, Jesus, he is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the capstone. And we find the same message in Ephesians 2 verse 20, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. And Peter picks it up in his first letter, chapter 2 verse 6, when he says, For in the scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Burn stones. If you put your trust in Jesus, you will never be put to shame. Why? Because Jesus takes burnt stones and he turns them into living stones. Have a look at the two verses before the one we've just read. In verse 4 and 5, As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by men but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So, rise up, burn stones. Put your trust in Jesus. You will not be put to shame. You will become a living stone and part of God building His spiritual house on earth today. Yes, and think big. It's happening in every sector of society where you work. God is building his kingdom on earth and he is using burnt stones. If you're feeling the fire of this pandemic in whatever way, be alert. You're in the middle of something of prophetic significance. God is building his kingdom on earth in this season and he is using burnt stones. Let's just pause and just pray together now. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3, You know that you are a letter from Christ, the result of our ministry, written not with ink, 
but with the Spirit of the living God. Not on tablets of stone, but on the tablets of human hearts. Lord Jesus, Nehemiah built with burnt stones. Jesus does not write his letter on tablets of stone, but on the tablets of human hearts. Come today, Lord, and write your letter on our hearts. Write it with the Spirit of the living God. Engrave your resurrection onto the burnt sections of our hearts. The burnt relationships, the burnt hope, the burnt dreams and ideals. And onto a nation burnt by this pandemic. And Lord, make us a letter from Christ himself that others can open and read. Changed hearts, changed lives, and a changed nation. Let our letter be read in the workplace, in the third spaces where we live and our lives. Build us into every sector of society as living stones designed to bring the kingdom to earth. And then, Lord, give our letter to other burnt stones in the community around us. Over authentic relationships, let them read this letter of our lives and discover that we too are burnt and broken, but we found the one who uses burnt stones and makes them living stones. Help us to be a letter of hope to many who deeply need to know that you use burnt stones. Oh God, let your kingdom come. In Jesus' name. Amen. What a powerful message. Thank you so much, Mr. Bruce, for sharing it with us. That's it from us today. And the church's banking details will be up on the screen. Do enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And from me to you, take care and enjoy the new week. Bye-bye. <laughs>